Hi, I'm Shannon Brinker, and today I'm going to talk to you about the ProTemp Crown from 3M. The ProTemp Crown is a single unit provisional that really is a prefabricated provisional made out of a mileable composite. When I say mileable, it's just that. It can be crushed in your hands, but once it is seated and cured, it's very, very strong. The beauty of this product is that it is just that. It is for single units. So instead of having to take a preliminary impression and also utilize provisional materials in a cartridge, we're able to fabricate a single unit uh, that is already pre-made. Now, for new assistants, this is fabulous because it is so hard for us to teach anatomy and also talk about the way that a single unit should be fabricated. Uh, 3M really has taken all of that um, really worry uh, from us. And I'll tell assistants when they're first getting out of school, this is really the product that you want to use. Um, but I don't want you to think that I don't use it in my practice as well, because we do. I love the fact of not having to take a preliminary impression first. Uh, and we also utilize it in special emergencies if we're using any type of CAD CAM system. Sometimes we know that it might not be able to make a final restoration for us right away. We may have to make a provisional, but what happens if we forgot to take the pre-op? And so this product is really, really utilized a lot in the CAD CAM world. But let's talk about the features of it. The best part about it is that it has a very universal shade, one, A2. Uh, it really and truly has two different sh uh, sizes that you can use. I'll tell you my practice, I utilize mostly the smalls. It comes in larges and smalls. And we'll talk about how to decipher which one you're going to need. Um, the other thing is, is that it comes in molars and premolars and also canines. Uh, there have been times that I have had a patient uh, that I wasn't able to uh, have a preliminary impression uh, for a canine and I was able to utilize the pro temp crown. I'll tell you that doesn't happen very often. Uh, so the majority of our cases that you're going to see in your practice are going to be molars and premolars. But this is a very good product and it is so easy to fabricate. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So what is that process and what materials do you need? I'll tell you the first time you use this product, it's going to be tough. Just like anything we do in dentistry, you have to do it a few times to be a pro. I tell assistants, by the time you utilize this on the third crown, you are a pro. It is that easy. So I want to share with you some techniques uh, and really give you some tips to make it fast for you, easier and efficient, so you can really make these in anywhere from three to four minutes. And that's about how long it takes me now. So, let's get started. When you look at the prep, one of the things to decipher is, is it going to be a small or large? And I'll tell you, 90% of the time, I'm using a small. But in your packet and in your kit, you do have a ruler that helps us with that. What we would utilize the ruler for is to really tell us, uh, is it going to be a small or a large? And again, 90% of the time, I'm going to go with the small. So the first thing you want to do is you have to understand that this is made out of composite. You can crush it. It's part composite, part plastic, part acrylic, part glass. So it can be crushed. So you have to be really careful with it. And the other thing is you don't want to spend a whole lot of time handling it because, um, you know, you can really mess with the properties. When you open it up, it is in like a cellophane wrapper. And I tell us this to be really careful. What I do is I'll stretch it and pop it out on the occlusal surface. Okay? So you'll see here I'm going to remove that outer shell and I'm going to put it to the side. Okay? That's just to help uh, keep it shaped. But notice all the anatomy that was placed into this provisional. I will tell you that this is probably my favorite product that 3M has made. I absolutely love this. Uh, if there was one product that they would say you couldn't do without, this would be it. Because I really, really utilize this a lot in our practice. The great thing about it, again, as a new assistant, you don't have to know a lot about anatomy because it's already placed in this for you. The other thing is notice that you'll see the facial anatomy. Uh, it's basically a little cheek, a little line. And what we say is it's always going to be cheek to cheek. So it's foolproof for you to make sure that you choose which side it's going to fit. 
One of the things that I want you to notice is that it has a little lip on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take scissors and remove some of this because it is extended. There are times where patients may have some periodontal issues. We also may have a tooth that we're going to add a little bit more because of recession. Uh, and so that is why they've actually extended this a little bit more for us to utilize if we needed that, but most of the time we're not. And so we're gonna be taking scissors and trimming it. Now, a couple of things that I'll share with you is when you're using scissors, you really wanna use scissors like this. And I love these. Uh, these actually have a curve to them. Uh, you don't wanna use straight scissors because when you're cutting all the way around on this uh, provisional, it's really tough to trim uh, and make sure that everything is really nice and has a good curve to it. So I like these rounded scissors. Makes it tough if you're going to use straight. The other thing is I want you to kind of look at it. One of the things that you'll notice, and I'm going to put it down so I can kind of show you here, when you have a, a prep, these provisionals are really made and prefabricated to almost look convex or concave, excuse me. Um, and so what will happen is as you trim it, it'll start to kind of go under just a little bit. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute. So when you have a prep, if you think about it and you just take this provisional and you just slam it down on the prep, you're going to mash it to place. And what's going to happen is it's going to kind of curl up and you could cause it to fracture in approximate areas are really the first place that that happens. So I want you to really look at the way it's gonna look and how are you gonna think about placing it on this prep. So again, it's shaped like this. We're gonna open it up and get it up and over the prep instead of just mashing it to place like we did with some of those ion crowns that are metal, okay? This is very different, not the same technique. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut it all the way around and you're gonna cut it about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Now I'll tell you, you'll think you cut enough, you really haven't, sometimes you have to go back. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda of cut that all the way around, okay? Trim it, and you can't really cut it too short. Uh, well, I say you can't, you can cut it too short, but I'll tell you, most assistants are trying to be too conservative and they don't cut enough, okay? So notice about how much I have here. That's really important, okay? So we're gonna take that off our scissors and I'm gonna set it aside. The other thing is I'll take my hands and kind of roll it up just like that because it's a little bit jagged, right, uh, where I've cut it. Uh, and notice I just cut it all the way around. Now, the other thing that you wanna do is take your scissors and you're gonna cut out the interproximal areas, uh, almost like a little horseshoe. You can imagine here on the model, if you don't cut out the interproximal areas and you just cut all the way around, what's going to happen is when you seat it on your model or you seat it on your patient in the prep, they're going to bite down and it's going to split. And where it usually splits is right in the interproximal area. So we're going to take our scissors and we're going to just remove that interproximal area. Okay? So I'm going to take my scissors and just cut that out. Just like that. And don't worry about it if it's not perfect. Uh, because we're going to smooth it here in just a minute, okay? Got to do both sides, both interproximal areas. Again, if you don't, you can imagine the tissue's going to be right there, and when they bite down, they're going to split it. It happens every time. So you have to cut it all the way around and then cut out the interproximal areas. And again, I'm going to roll it again just a little bit, okay? Don't want to lose the form. The other thing is I don't want to crush it. Now, remember I said that anatomy, you'll be able to see that uh, you've got the facial anatomy here like a little cheek. It's gonna go to the outside, okay? But before I do that, I wanna sit it here because I want you to notice the way that it looks, okay? So here, if I set it on the prep, it's really, if I just took my finger and mashed it down, I'm gonna crush it. And I've gotta get it up and over the prep. So what I'm going to do is turn it on its inside. I'm gonna grab my instrument okay and for those of you that have mixed alginate you know how you mix alginate and you'll take a spatula and you lay it flat across the bowl and you thin it out and you'll go around the bowl this is kind of what you're doing with the inside of this provisional okay so I'm going to take my spatula I'm going to sit it inside and I'm going to open this up okay remember that I have to get it up and over the prep if I just took it and mashed it to place it's going to fracture all right so I'm thinning out the walls of the provisional to get it up and over the prep. And don't lose sight of where that anatomy is, okay? So now what I'm going to do, much better, right? Look, I don't have to force it. 
I don't have to force it to place and I'm just going to push it down just like that. Now, if I were to push it down, and this is really important, I'm going to kind of turn it up on its side here. If this tooth is higher than the teeth on either side, I didn't cut enough. So now I'm going to go back to my scissors and take a little bit off. And I want to look at that myself. It's a little bit higher, but I'm pretty much okay with it. Okay, but if it was substantially higher than the teeth on either side, I would take it off the prep and cut more. That's the first thing you want to think about. The other thing is, patients will say, if you don't make this a little bit smaller as far as squeeze it just a little bit and go back and forth to fit the arch form. And when I say arch form, it really just needs to be squeezed just a little bit, okay? And make sure that it fits the teeth on either side. So sometimes I'll take it and squeeze it just a little bit, but you don't want to squeeze it too much. I've seen assistants do that. And what happens is you're ruining the anatomy. You're making it uh, it's no longer a circumference, you're making it into a rectangle, and that's ugly, right? Patients really want nice provisionals, uh, and, and you don't want to destroy uh, the beauty of this because it's already made for us, right? So we don't want to crush it and make it look ugly, but I do want to make sure that it does fit the arch form. The other thing is it is made out of composite. So if you have contacts that are open, you can grab it, and stretch it to fit the contact. I mean, now Grant, we know teeth uh, don't really move, right? Uh, unless you do have a model, but I can tell you that I can stretch the material, I can grab it and kind of mold it and, and, and really stretch it to touch the other teeth on either side. And that's what I'm going to do to get my contact. Now, let's talk about what if you do have an open contact. I'll share that with you a little bit later. How can we put that back to make sure that this tooth is touching? But most of the time, I can get it um, here uh, just by stretching that material because, again, it is a malleable crown, and that's what we call it. So now once I've done that, I'm going to take a look. Okay, I'm going to hold it down on the prep. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my instrument, okay, and I'm going to take my spatula. If there's any time now that you are going to spend, and I'm going to just remove some of, of make sure I've got little uh, areas here that are clean on my spatula because I really want you to be able to see. Um, if there's any time that you would spend, this is where I want you to spend your time. The more detailed you are with the margins here, utilizing this instrument, the less trimming you're going to do. This is the secret to hardly touching it. I will tell you now, I've gotten so good at this, I don't even touch it with a burr. And that's what I want for you. Now, when you first start out, you will. But you have to spend a little bit of time. And so I want you to take your thumb and almost, it's like a palm thumb grasp, and you're going to go around the margins, almost like you're, you're basically peeling an apple, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm smoothing these areas because if you spend just a little bit more time here, again, you don't have to hardly trim it. You don't even touch it, okay? The other thing is, is make sure that it's not overextended into the tissue area, okay? I don't want it to be too long. I also don't want it to be too short. Now, the beauty of this material is that it is composite, so I can almost take my finger and bring it down to the margin if I cut it too short. But I actually just want to make sure that I have a really, really, really good, clean margin. All right, a lot easier, though, here on the model. Uh, but I can tell you that in the mouth, um, I can make these in three to four minutes now. Um, and so can my team. They were just like, how do you do that so quick, so quickly? And I said, well, the more time you spend right here, the better you're going to learn that you don't have to trim it. And so you can see I'm just spending a little bit more time smoothing it out, okay? I'm going to remove just a little bit of material here because I have just a little bit too much. And now I'm going to take my glove and just smooth that off, okay? And I'm going to just make sure that things are nice and smooth here. Just drag it along the margin. Just like so, okay? And I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So now once we've got that facial, I'm going to turn it over here so you can see the inside, okay? And again, spending the time making sure that things are really nice and smooth. I'm just a little bit overextended there, but I'm going to just kind of smooth that off, okay? And again, using a really good instrument will help you to do that. And I don't want it to be too overextended, but I also don't want it to be too short, all right? So now I'm happy with that, pretty happy. 
I'm going to just make sure again I've got good contacts. I'm looking at those. Um, and now what I'm going to do is have my patient open and close. Now, when they close, I'm going to say close gently and open again. And I want you to close together gently and open again. And I'll say now, I want you to close one more time. Squeeze it a little bit more and open again. And I'm going to do it one more time. Squeeze it. And I'm going to say, I want you to hold it. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to just make sure one more time that I don't have any excess material, okay? I have just a little bit there on the facial, and I'm going to take my cure light, and I'm going to cure it. Now, some, some people will say, you know, do a little tack. You can. I'm going to tack it from the lingual side, okay? And then I'm going to have her open, and I'm going to just give a little bit of a tack cure there, okay? And I'm just going to make sure that I've got any other little areas here that look like we need to, to uh, adjust, and I don't. I'm actually really, really happy with that, so I'm going to remove it, okay? And what I want you to notice is the more time that you spend, the less, again, trimming you're going to do. But I'm going to take my cure light before I do my trimming, and I'm going to sit it right inside and just make sure it's really cured, okay? And again, depending on the cure light, with this one, it's cured. Uh, it's a really, really strong uh, light, but sometimes there's other ones out there that we'll use in our practice that will not cure as fast. So you want to make sure that, again, you're really happy with that uh, and that it's cured. The only thing that you really should have to do at this point is maybe take a sandpaper disc to it if you need to. Uh, if I'm going to take a sandpaper disc, I'm going to just use a little super snap uh, from Shofu. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit, and I am just going to barely dust it. I mean, barely. You should not have to spend any time doing this. I'm, I mean it. I don't want you to. And remember, the secret to not having to spend any time is utilizing that spatula and getting those margins, okay? Now, I do want to mention that when you're smoothing these, you want to make sure that you don't wipe out those margins. We talked about that. If you do wipe out your margins, you want to place them back because you can't just tell a patient, um, you know, keep those areas clean. Um, so it is important. If I were going to fabricate the provisional for this patient and I had an open contact area uh, or an open margin, I would just roughen it up and I could always add a little bit of the uh, of Filtech uh, flow in there. Um, or what you can do is if you have an area that's completely open, let's say you really wipe out the contact here. Okay, so on my model, if you can see, I'm going to just pretend I wiped out the contact. What you can do is take off your provisional, okay, turn up the motor a little bit higher, roughen up that area. I'm just going to smooth this one little place right here. Roughen up that area, okay. I would take my Filtec flowable and I would just squeeze a little bit right in that contact area seat it, okay, and hold it tight next to the other tooth, and I would cure it. Then what I would do is take it off, and I would, I would only dust just a little bit on the area, just one time, because you've got to be able to put that contact back. If you don't have a good contact and the contact is completely open, if it takes three weeks for that final restoration to come back, the teeth can move, and this is where we spend a lot of time grinding on those final restorations, and I don't like to do that. So I want to make sure that we fabricate a provisional that looks good, feels good, but also holds the place, okay, of those teeth. So uh, again, really happy with this. I will tell you that most of the time that is all I would do, but I want to explain to you that if you really spend just a little bit more time, again, uh, polishing it just a little bit, making sure it's nice and smooth for the patient, um, because if you don't, and the most important surface is going to be the lingual surface. And you say, why? Because we swallow 3,000 times a day. And patients will tell you, gosh, you know, Shannon, my, my tongue was so sore. Um, it just, you know, I had so many cuts, so many areas. And 
Um, I can tell you that every time they swallow, they're rubbing against this provisional. And so if you think about the facial surfaces of your provisional, you don't have to worry as much. Um, I, don't want, I, I want them to be polished. I don't want you to think that I'm not going to polish them correctly, but the inside is where the tongue is going to lay. And so they're going to rub up against this, uh, you know, every time they swallow. So ideally, what I would love for you to do is making sure that is really, really polished. And there's a lot of good polishers out there. I'm going to demonstrate a one-step polisher uh, that you can use. It'll really put a nice shine on it. And again, making sure that that is a really good glossed area. So I'm going to grab that. So the polisher that I'm going to be using, this is from, this is another polisher from Shofu. And this is called... Um, the uh, one gloss and it's just a little cup. All I'm going to do is just turn it up just a little bit and just polish this area really, really well. Um, and what I'll do is I'll even just kind of, again, another palm thumb grass. I'll actually just kind of turn it on its side and just polish it straight down. I like that with cups. Uh, you can also do it with disc, um, but I'm not going to touch that inner proximal area, right? Don't touch that. I'm going to smooth this straight down. And when we're teaching our courses, I, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to be done. You know, one, two, three, and you're done. So you saw how fast I made this. I will tell you the first time I made it, it took me uh, probably about seven minutes to fabricate my first unit. The second time, uh, I did it in five. The third, four, and I've just gotten faster and faster. And it is a really, really great product. It's so easy, and you can see the beauty of it is it already has all this anatomy. We're not cutting and trimming that anatomy into uh, these provisionals. It's already shaped for us. Patients really, really do like this. I love the fact, too, that it is very, very strong. I mean, very strong. But the last thing that I want to mention is, again, we talked about this slick film inside. It is really, really important that you get in there and roughen this area up because what can happen is as you squeeze out your cement, you put it in your provisional, we're going to seed it on the tooth. Sometimes it'll squeeze out and when uh, you go to clean up the provisional cement, um, I'll go to clean it up. I'm just removing it. Sometimes the provisional will come off and it's because there's a little film thickness inside that's slick. They call this an exothermic film thickness. And so what you want to do is really get in there and roughen that inside up. Now, some assistants say, well, I can just use some alcohol and get in there and roughen it. Nope, it's not the same. Alcohol has water, and it's not going to really give you any micro mechanical retention. So what I want you to think about is possibly even utilizing a carbide. And um, I just want to demonstrate that just to show you what I would normally do um, in their practice um, if you don't have a micro etcher. Um, is just take, take a burr and just kind of roughen it up. All I'm doing is just giving myself a little rough space here, uh, and that's it. Saw how easy that was? And I'm just roughening up the inside. So as I place, and I'm going to clean it out, but as I place my cement, I'm going to have a lot more stability, uh, and I'm not going to have to worry about the temporary coming off because, again, it has that micro-mechanical retention to the inside of the provisional. So let's talk about the cementation process now. So one of the things that I want to mention is as you're cementing these, we want to make sure that everything is isolated. I'm going to dry off. The prep's really good. I would have rinsed it and dried it when we're cementing this provisional. I'm going to squeeze out the cement. I'm going to mix it up and put it into the provisional, and I'm going to seat it on the prep. Okay? I'm going to take a cotton roll, and I'm going to place it so this way as the patient bites down, they've got something to bite down and hold with pressure. As the cement starts to set, I'm going to take an explorer and I'm going to just push this away, okay? And again, this is a spatula, but I would normally take a scaler or an explorer and just remove all the cement. But one of the things that I want you to think about is if you're utilizing the retraction capsule from 3M, which is our, uh, a hemostasis material that basically pushes the tissue out of the way uh, and helps control any kind of bleeding that we may have before we take the final impression, I'll utilize that with also uh, a very small cord, like a double zero cord. And we'll place the cord in the sulcus before we take our final impression and then utilizing the retraction capsule right on top. And so we'll rinse that off and then take our final impressions, but I never pull that cord. I leave it. So here, after I cement my provisional and I'm removing this cement, I can take an explorer and peel out the cord. Don't forget it. That's not supposed to stay there. But the great thing about waiting is that when I pull out the cord, any excess cement comes with it. And it makes it so much easier. Now, uh, I will tell you, if you don't roughen up the inside of this provisional, uh, the provisional is going to come with you. So you've got to make sure you've got some micro-mechanical retention. 
So I, I'll tell you that I, I love this material. Um, it is my favorite product from 3M. Um, and I can tell you that there's something else that you can utilize it for. If a patient comes in and they are missing a tooth and we do not have a way to make a really nice uh, impression to fabricate a nice provisional, you can also utilize the ProTemp crown and place it right in. Now, Grant, that's why it's so great. You know how it had that lip when I popped it out and it had that extra material? I'll just take it and seat it right on the patient, right in the patient's mouth. So if Jane comes in and we're gonna do a three and a bridge, I'm like, oh, what am I gonna use? Before, we would take an impression and just take a burr and rim out a nice big ugly circle, right? Um, now what we can do is I can take the pro -tem crown, I can seat it right where that tooth is missing and utilize that for my matrix. And so what I'll do is I'll just seat it on there, make sure I've got good connectors, make sure that they're touching, I'll cure it, and then I'll take my preliminary impression. And now I've got a beautiful, three unit provisional um, matrix that I can use to make a nice three unit provisional. So uh, there's so many ways that this can be utilized in our practice. And most importantly, um, the best part about it is we can seat the patient. Uh, we don't have to take a pre-op impression anymore. Um, we don't have to worry uh, about having all those steps. The doctor can anesthetize the patient and we can get moving. And when we're done, all it takes is just one little restoration. And again, molars, premolars, and canines. Um, and you just have to choose whether you want to use the small or the large, but 90% of the ones that we're using are the small. And so I hope that um, this will uh, be a great, great little added tip for you uh, to utilize and actually fabricate something so quick within you know, three to four minutes. But again, you're gonna have to make a few. You know, I usually say when you get to that third one, you'll be a pro um, and you'll be able to fabricate these in minutes.